Your Beautiful Face, track five. This sounds different to me than, than the other tracks on the album. Um, sonically, it's very bright and sparkly. Um, I started off with like little musical box patterns and, uh, and mixing that with a Celeste pattern as well and some very bright sampled acoustic guitar. Um, so it all came together as like a musical box. Um, had a very bright kind of sunny light, mm. sort of um, almost like a scalpel going through something. It was very, very sharp. Um, and I thought it hinted at something that, although it was beautiful, was there was there was something slightly underneath it that that could take it in another direction. Spot on then, really. Uh, well, that must have taken me to exactly the same place because I, uh, I married it to a narrative and I, I haven't so much on it. I'm, I'm mostly speaking, I think, on, on this one. Uh, some words I wrote about a, a woman that I'd encountered many years ago who was, who was um, achingly beautiful um, in a steely sort of way. Uh, very conscious of her own beauty, and very ambitious and very manipulative. So not a very nice person, but, but, but quite a dangerous one, men being what they are. Um, I escaped by the skin of my teeth. I knew she was trouble. Um, but I, about a year or so ago, I, I met her daughter. Um, and bearing in mind this is about 20 years down the line, her daughter looks, looks not at all unlike she did at the time. Um, she's her mother's daughter for sure, she's very beautiful, but she's a very different person. She's much softer, uh, and she's, she's, she's got a softer temperament, she's a sweet girl. Um, and the idea that her beauty had been passed on to this girl, and also the slightly comforting idea that um, that the mother herself would be so much less beautiful now and, and, and lost all that power, um, feels like the triumph of good over evil. <laughs> Well, if it's real love, it will, yeah, if, if, it, if it's real. I think this is the epic on the album, isn't it? And it's, um, it goes through many changes. Um, it's quite, quite dark and tribal to start with, but then you end up in a very bizarre middle section with just low cellos, and then Steve goes into what sounds like a sermon. And then <laughs> the rock like, drums come in. Don't let, yeah, and then rock drums come in. <laughs> And then strings, and then it goes to a kind of pop chorus. Don't let this put you off. Um, <laughs> it's good on paper, but it does. Sound. But it is, yeah. Uh, a lot of people like this track. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it really just discusses um, the fact. I, mean, I ran into a very wise man a few years back. And, uh, one of the things he told me, and I think it's true, is that there are only really two real emotions. Everything we do is born out from that from that uh, impulse. So either an impulse of love which leads us to do, which which is where our strength comes from, or, or, or from fear, which is where everything negative leads on from. You know, um, and, and the song is really that that simple, but it, it, it kind of covers a lot of ground to make that point. Sometimes. Track seven, Lifting the Lid. This is probably my favorite track. Um, it's a very ambient piece and uh, kind of quite, for me, quite claustrophobic sonically. Um, there are a lot of kind of found sounds that, that, that become apparent as, as the song progresses. Um, footsteps, kind of very small electronics. It's 
very spread across the stereo spectrum, so it's like you're kind of hearing little things coming and going, and, and very delicate, very ambient, and I, I was really unsure about whether I wanted a vocal on this at all, but in the end, I sent it over. Yeah, and, and I remember you sending it over saying, well, I th I'd really, I'm, I'm sending this, but I really see this as an instrumental. Um, and I listened to it and thought, I wonder if there's a way I could get involved in this without, without taking up too much room or getting in its way. And um, that was that was how I sort of tiptoed into this song. And I, and I, but it, it did take me to a place, and I had some words which I thought would, would, would make a lot of sense with it, which were about the lid being lifted on one's own soul. Uh, and light pouring in, and that that was not necessarily a good thing. And it, it might have been been better left alone. A little bit like when people go and dig up these mummies, you know, Tutankhamun and all that. No, I, I think they might be better just leave it. Uh, so that's, that's essentially to live. Yeah, that one's. I love that track. Your beautiful face has aged. Instead of going for the sort of 10, 11 minute epic title track, we've gone for 1 minute 20 seconds. And it's kind of a reprise of uh, Your Beautiful Face, but it just emphasises the title and the kind of feeling behind that. And I just put together Steve's vocal from there with, um, with an ambient piece of music that I'd had for a long time. I and I thought the two way elements way worked well together and, damage, and made for quite an unusual type of track. Yeah, from my point of view, I'm just going back to that juxtaposition between the beautiful face of, of the wicked stepmother and the beautiful face of the innocent daughter and how it, it's not the weapon that does the damage, it's in whose hand it rests. Without your beautiful.